Okay, again, good morning again. I'll ask you to rise to your feet and let's just have an amazing time of worship, amen. And good morning and welcome those watching live online on Facebook. Welcome to Life Church Belize, where shifts happen, right? Where, where lives are changed and mindsets are renewed, right? Our minds or hearts are renewed to think like Christ. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this amazing time that you've given us, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that we can come together as a family to worship you, to honor you, to glorify your name. Holy Spirit, come in a, in a new and a fresh way this morning. Come with a fresh fire this morning, Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that we would just open our hearts, our minds, and our ears to receive what you have for us this morning. We just honor you, God. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just, I just want to, um, just want to praise you, Father God, for all that you're doing in our lives. I pray, Father God, for the worship team. That they will just pull heaven down one, one, one more time, Father God, just to touch earth, Father God. Oh, let your anointing, let your presence just flow and come in, in this place in a new way. Oh, Father God, let the manifest presence of God be so evident, Lord God, that every single person in here and watching online would feel and experience you in a new way. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for what you're going to do this morning again, Lord. We give you all the honor, Father God, and glory and praise. Amen. So, guys, all you that are here visiting are welcome here um, for the first time. I just want to say that um, in this house, you have freedom. Um, there's lots of space to run around if you want, jump, dance, whatever you want to do. Just, just let God work in your hearts and connect you to Him this morning again, right? So, enjoy the worship. Guys. Turn into wine. Open the eyes 
And open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you, oh God to the darkness, into darkness we shine. and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, none like you. Sing, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher. And our God is healer, awesome in power, Lord. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand? And if, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then and if, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand? And if, and if our God is for us, then who could ever? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again? What could stand again? What could stand again? What could stand again? Our God, and our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is a healer. He's awesome. awesome oh, that's who our God is this morning. Our God. And our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you higher than any other. Our God is a healer. He's awesome in power. That's who our God is this morning. Our God. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any. Let's declare Him over our situation this morning. Awesome in power, Lord. That's who our God is. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher. And our God is sealer. Awesome in power, Lord God. How many of you believe we serve an awesome God? How many of you believe we serve an awesome God this morning? As we sing this next song, I just ask that it's COVID times. And also, if you could turn to your neighbor and just tell your neighbor, you know, that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, the roads marked with suffering. And this pain in the offer. Blessed be, blessed be your name. Every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed. Blessed be your name. 
the land that is plentiful, though your streams are abundant, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Though there's pain, blessed be your name. And every blessing you pour out, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to you. When the darkness, when the darkness, Lord, I'm going to tell you, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory. Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give, you give and take away. You give, you give and take away. My heart, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be. You give and you take away. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, Still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your glorious name, blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord, and blessed be your name, blessed be the name of Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. And every blessing, and every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to. Let them hear your voices. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Blessed be, blessed be your name. We want to bless you this morning, oh God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And blessed be your glorious name. One more time. And blessed be the name. We just want to tell you how big you are this morning. How mighty you are this morning. And blessed be the name of the Lord. And blessed be your glorious name. Amen.
chosen generation. All for to show is excellent. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. Call for to show is excellent. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. So is excellent. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. Call for to show is excellent. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. amazing isn't it we're walking in miracles we're walking in power right but I think it is time to not just say it but do it right so I'm challenging you this week that we're gonna do it and not just say it right but anyway um we want to go over to another uh, we're gonna um, open the um, floor to, for um, tithes and offerings before we go on for worship and um, I won't, won't take much time because the best is the message afterwards right so I won't take it away from that time. So um, as we sing the next song, a couple worship songs you can come up to the sides right here, our offering box you can put in your offering. 
And I just want to let you know that um, that some of us and are going through a hard time, but that's the time to give. Because if you can't pay your bills, then it doesn't matter. Then just give to so God can, re uh, can restore it back and give you more, right? So let's just pray. Father, I thank you for all those um, here this morning, Lord God. I just pray bless the tithes and offering this morning. Multiply it, Father God. Give us wisdom, Lord, to use it for your honor and your glory to, to advance your kingdom in this city, Lord. To transform this city. To fill heaven and empty hell. I pray you bless all those that give this morning. Father God, just bless them with, with finance. Bless them with revelations, Lord God. Bless them with downloads of your kingdom, Lord Jesus. As we give, as we worship you with our tithes and offerings this morning, Father God. We're here. Expecting. And we're pulling down heaven with our expectation that you are going to do something this morning. That is going to revolutionize the way I think about you, Lord God. And Father God, you, the word says that we can only love others the way we love, we love ourselves, Father God. And I pray this morning, Father God, that we would, we would just experience your love in a new way, Father God. That we would receive, Lord God, a new way of loving ourselves. And Father God, that we can even be connected to our own selves, Lord God. Help us, Father God, to reconnect to you, Lord, and reconnect your own selves so that we could connect to others and that we could love others the way you love us, Lord. We thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, amen. So you can come up as we finish a couple more songs. Ah uh -huh. 
the God I serve, the God I serve knows only how to triumph, 
and my God will never fail. So I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see, and I'm going to see your victory. And I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see, and I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory for the battle belongs. And I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory for the battle belongs to you. weapon the weapon may be formed but it won't prosper and when the darkness falls it won't breathe it because the god i serve god i serve knows only how to try and my god will never fail my god will never fail the weapon may be formed the weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe in. God, our God, our son knows only how to try And my God will never fail. And I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory For the battle belongs to you For the battle belongs to you, Lord And I'm going to see your victory Speaking to dead situations this morning For the battle belongs to our God I'm going to see, I'm going to see your victory I'm going to see your victory, yeah. for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see your victory, I'm going to see your victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. And you take, and you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take and you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take and you take what the enemy Turn it for good. You take and you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. And I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory for the battle. 
And I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see your victory. I'm going to see your victory, yes. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We're going to see a victory, amen? We are going to see a victory. I want you to repeat after me. Say with me. We... Okay, let's do it again. One, two, three. We are going to see a victory. You see, if you don't even believe it yourself, you're never going to see a victory. You have to believe it yourself, right? You have to declare it. You have to speak it into existence because your words have power. You create the future you're going to walk in. And I, I honestly believe that everybody here wants a great future, amen? So let's do it again. One, two, three. We are going to see a victory. Amen. I don't, you know what? It doesn't really matter how bad it is. It doesn't matter how many problems you have. It doesn't matter how bad things look. Because you are looking from this realm right here. But God is not looking from this realm right here. He's looking from the third heaven. And up there, He sees the finished product of your life. Up there, He sees the finish of your life. And so you need to start looking from the third heaven. And you go into the future and see what, what is the end product. And you come back and you work towards it. Amen. And you see, as long as we are looking from this, this realm right here, from the first heaven, it will always look messy. It will always look, you always see the problems. We're always going to blame the government, the people around us, our family, our job, our bosses. But when you look from the third heaven, or you go into the future, and you see your end, you can come back, and you can live proactive, instead of just trying to de defend who you might want to be. Amen? So I just declare this morning, that you are going to see a victory. That you were going to go and look to, to see the end and come back and live the life to reach that end. Romans 8, 28 says that anything the enemy comes and messes you up, the anything he does, if you continue to walk in the will of the Father, it will turn out to be good. Can you have an amen? And if, if things are not good right now, what does that mean? He's not done with you. If things are not looking good today, that means He's not done with you. You see, it is you who defeats yourself. You know who is your biggest enemy? You are your biggest enemy. Because you keep yourself from the end product. Because you just look at today. It is time to really believe what Romans 8, 28 says. That if things are not looking good right now, that means it's not the end yet. So I want you this morning to... Open your hearts with full of hope and expectation. And knowing that, you know what? I am in this mess maybe, but I'm coming out of it. I may be in a situation that I don't know how I got in there. Or maybe you do. But you know that you're coming out. Why? Because you know you serve a father that loves you and has only good intentions towards you. You serve a father that loves you so much that he sent his son to die. And please, brothers and sisters and all your friends that are here, let's stop kneeling at the cross and weeping because Jesus is there no more. Jesus is not at the cross anymore, you know. Jesus is not hanging at the cross. Jesus is not dead. He passed the cross and He went and He rose again to give you life. You see, many times, many times why we see the world so messed up, because we're at the cross weeping when we should be out there alive and declaring and bringing the kingdom of God. Amen. So this morning, Father, I thank you. Lord, I pray that all the hearts would be receptive to receive your word, Jesus. Lord, just renew our minds so that we could think like you do, Jesus. Your word says that you want us to, to think like you do. 
And this morning I pray that we would receive the words that you have for us this morning that is going to change our way of thinking from an earthly, fleshly mindset to a heavenly, third world, third realm heaven mindset. That we would learn to tap into what you have. And that we would live proactively of what you is doing. Not in offense or defense. No, sorry, not in defense of what the enemy is doing. But that we would live proactively and partner with what you are doing, Lord. For heaven to come to earth and to change and transform. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. There's something I wanted to tell you just before I, I give up the mic, but I just forgot what it was, but that's, that's good anyway, right? Anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for all those that made it this out this morning. And you that are watching online, you're going to miss out some, but thank you for watching anyway. Look at what the Lord has done. I don't know how many of you, how much you know of our journey in this ministry. But I can tell you again and again that if we had given up, when we felt like giving up, we wouldn't be here today, what, we, what we're doing today. And I think some of you sometimes, because you don't see the results that you were expecting and the timing of the, the results, you give up and you bail out. And I'm telling you this morning that bailing out is never an option. You know, we don't have a plan B. We only have plan A, and that's doing what God has called us to do. And I'm so thankful to just be a testimony of the goodness of God when you just push through. How close can I come to the edge until you're going to get on your edge? Um, worship has always been my heart. Worship has been, always been something that, that I felt was part of the DNA of this ministry. And we pushed and we pushed and we pushed. And look what God has done. And you see sometimes... Sometimes, I'm going to take up a little more, couple more minutes so uh, Steve Lorraine can um, rest a little bit more, right? Anyway, I just want to say one more thing. That sometimes, sometimes we, when God has given us a vision and we feel that we are called to do something. And especially, all of you that were here this weekend, you know a little bit more about yourself than you did before and how you operate, right? Okay, the death assessment. Some of you are D's and some I's and... Asses and C's. Um, me being a high D and a high I, I what that means is that I'm, a, I'm a, not a dictator, but a, I'm a really one of the things happening, right? <laughs> I'm a driver. And all you that know me, that I'm a really fast driver too. I, I don't mean with the vehicles. I, I already slowed down with that. Um, but not everybody believes me. But that's okay. Um, but I'm a driver. I'm, I'm a person that... that does not take no for an answer. If you say it can't be done, I will prove you I can do it myself, right? But what that does, what it has done is that that made me um, um, step over what God wanted to do. Okay, because I want to see it happening now. I want to see it happening this way. I, I, I felt that I could do it better than God. I, I stepped in many times. And um, I just want to tell you that, that just stick, stay in the race. Don't worry if don't, things don't happen all the, the, the way you thought. Just learn to rest in God and learn, him, learn that he can do things much better. And when he does something, suddenly things change. Suddenly you have that promotion. Suddenly you have a worship team of over a dozen on the stage and all together when you had nothing three years ago. Suddenly you have a breakthrough that you don't even know how that's possible. Suddenly, maybe you found a girlfriend, I don't know, but probably. Suddenly... You get a job that you've been praying for. And you know, that's suddenly followed by maybe years of praying and receiving. And if you stop before that suddenly happens, you're not going to know what is possible. And I'm here this morning to tell you that, you know what? This is a place of risk taking. This is a place of learning 
and exploring what is possible when we trust God and tap into what cannot be seen with our physical eyes. Amen? So I'm here and I'm so proud to um, call up our guest speakers this morning. They're an amazing couple, Steve and Lorraine from the Carolinas. And the, um, origi- um, yes, and also they are, we always, we, we so much talk about Bethel. Well, they have been a part of Bethel for so many years. So they carry that culture. And I think that's what kind of clicks us so good. Because, um, yeah, anyway. Um, so let us just welcome them up as they come and share what God has put in their hearts. And I'm telling you that all you that did not come out for the couples event, you missed out. And you can say sorry if you want to, but anyway, you missed out. But anyway, just open your hearts and receive what God has. What a great crowd. Awesome. Okay, how many of you were here at some point over the weekend? Okay, good. Great. How many of you were not here at some point over the weekend? Mm-hmm. Okay, I can kind of see you. Okay, mm-hmm. good, but we're seeing you today. I think it's pretty awesome. Well, we're just super happy to be able to be here, and uh, this actually is our first time to Belize. We've uh, had the privilege of traveling uh, a lot, actually, all over the world. Uh, when COVID hit, obviously things slowed down and actually kind of came to a halt, <laughs> really, not just slowed down. But now we're back out and traveling some more, and we're super excited about that and really happy to be here in this country for the first time. Right. We, uh, yeah, we, uh, we got some, connected. Uh, uh, so stay right there. Some things we love about this country is your enthusiasm. Absolutely. Seriously. Your passion, your kind-heartedness, um, just the warmth of who you are culturally. We have grown to love and yeah. value. Yeah. So we got connected a few years ago with John and Lisa Gotts, and uh, through the connection with them, we've kind of been talking about the possibility of coming for some time. So right. we are super happy that it finally happened. So last week, we actually spent time down in Machaca with them and had an opportunity to do a a marriage retreat weekend down there and then uh, a a few nights of the week this last week spend with the ministry school as well. And even some of the ones that were from up here that were a part of that. It was just super, super good just to be able to be a part of that and see what God's doing and actually share a little bit of our own experience but also share some of the revelations that God's given us having to do with relationship. You know, when God calls you and puts you in a place, you kind, that's just how you show up. It's like we really live and breathe for healthy, authentic, life-giving relationships. So we, whether that's family, church, friends, work, uh, marriage particularly, it's all of it, it's all relational. So when you cut us open, we kind of just bleed relationship. Yeah. We like to say that the... The um, mandate on every local church. So we want to say the mandate on you Mm. in this community is to bring transformation. Mm -hmm. In your workplaces, in your restaurants, in your schools, uh, in your your streets. Yeah, that would be awesome. One will do. We can share. (laughs) Thank you so much. He likes my. Yeah. He likes my. You don't want to share with me? (laughs) Man. Let me open this up. Do you want to open it up for me? Can you open it up for me? Um, what was I saying? Your mandate mandate for the local church. church. But you know what? You guys as a church are only as transformational out there as you are interpersonally right here. Your transformation out there is directly connected to your families, your marriages, your friendships, your relationships right here in this room being transformed. When you as a family are transformed, when your marriage is transformed, when your relationships are transformed, that transformation happens right out there. And that's how you win a nation. You win a nation not by just the words you speak, but the life you live. And everyone around you is watching 
to see how well you do this thing that we call relationship. So that's a part of what Steve and I do. We travel um, internationally and we do workshops for marriages, for whole churches, growing in relational intelligence. Uh, we do coaching one-on-one -on -one with married couples. We do a lot on Zoom, 60 to 70% now Zoom all around the world. We also offer a five-day, what we call Reignite Your Marriage, in our home. We've had couples come from all around the world um, to spend five days with us, one-on-one, -on -one, and we just help them dismantle their dysfunction, and we partner with them for freedom and tools that actually empower them to live a really rich and full life. So God's really blessed us to be able to do quite a lot. Actually, we, we got married in 1978. That was like probably before Forever. so many of you were even born at that point. But uh, yeah, you know, when you look at us, I know you can't believe we're that old, but we are. And we, uh, we've been married for 43 years. We have been in business. We also have worked a lot with church, local church and leadership. And in uh, 1989, we actually decided that God was calling us more into a full-time missions ministry. And so we ended up with some further training and ended up living actually in Kenya for about 11 years, working also in southern Sudan and living in Kenya. And when we came back to the States in 2001, we came back and were part of a church ministry and pastoring. And that's actually when we got connected with Bethel Church in Reading. Right. We, our son was there in ministry school. <clears throat> we got connected with them and their leadership and have continued to really just grow and evolve with that ministry as they also grew. In 2009, we actually moved to Redding, California, where Bethel's located. And again, we're a part of that, but uh, continued to travel as the Lord has actually opened up some areas to us to do that in. So we have two boys. They're both married, and we have eight grandkids. Can you imagine that God would bless us with eight? Did you already say that? Was I not listening? Eight grandkids from two kids. I mean, like our quiver feels super full. So we have, of our grandkids, we have a 15-year-old, 14-year-old, 13-year-old, 12-year-old, 10-year-old, 8-year-old, 4-year-old, and two months. Isn't that awesome? I think they're finished. Our pocketbook is finished. Yeah. Which, you know, with, uh, those of you grandparents, do you know what I'm talking about, don't you? The more grandkids you have, the more you, you need to have a padded pocketbook. Okay, so we're just thrilled to be here with you today. Thank you, Angie and Corny, for mm. inviting us into your house and making room for us to be with you. And um, we had a great weekend. But today what we want to do is we want to just share a little bit of our life with you and we want to cast some vision for what it looks like for you to build a stronghold of connection. Everybody just say a stronghold of connection. All weekend we've been talking about connection and we say that with regard to connection, there's only two options. You guys that were here over the weekend, help me. What are the two options when it comes to connection? Connection or what? Disconnection. There's no in between. In our relationships with one another, with the Lord, we're either connected, we're either hooked up, or we're disconnected. You know, one of the things that we were able to do beginning with 2002 was we were traveling quite a lot, but we limited our travel during that period of years of about eight years, 2002 to 2010, somewhere there. We were mostly just going to China, and we were going in and out of China at least a couple of times a year. Uh, it was really an incredible blessing to let us do that. In 2004, we were actually up in the northern part, up around Beijing, and had an opportunity to go up and, and view and, be a, and walk on, actually, the Great Wall of China. How many of you have ever read or studied about the Great Wall of China? Anybody yeah. been there? Has anybody been to the Great Wall? Okay. You never know. Well, I mean, it, it's what was that through in here? your mind. My imagination, <laughs> yeah, exactly. right? Exactly. I've been there in my mind. It's one of those things to where you can read about it, see pictures about it, but you can't even begin to comprehend until you're there. I mean, when we were up on the wall, we started just looking, and we would look all across just the ridges of the mountains, and as far as the eye could see, the wall was going. 
that direction and also this direction that was just so massive. And then starting to look at some of the things about it, you know, right now in terms of just point A to point B, you know, it goes through 11 provinces and spans about 5,500 5, miles. Now, if you add up all of the walls that were built, which is not just in a straight line, but during the different provinces or the different dynasties and different things, it actually covered about 13,000 miles. So we're talking about a massive wall that was constructed. Now, obviously, the reason it was constructed was because China was very rich in stock, livestock, agriculture. And the neighboring countries, and particularly those in the north and in the Mongol area, they didn't have that. They had very harsh winters and hard kinds of life, and so they couldn't really maintain and sustain all the, the food that they needed and things. So they would come down and invade China and just take all the stuff. So finally, they decided, no, we need to have a wall of protection. We need to build something that's going to help. Now, actually, this took over 200 years in the building. And it also, we, we know that there were probably about 400,000 men that died during the construction of this wall. And it was a massive thing, and it was more than just one emperor that was in charge of that. But the interesting thing is, is that even though it was a massive wall, we're talking about 30, sometimes 30 feet thick, sometimes 26 feet high. I mean, it was incredible. And yet, it was still, be, it was still able to be breached. The interesting thing is, is over the, the years of that wall being there, there was really only one person who breached it, Genghis Khan. Have you ever heard of him? He was the one that kind of founded the Mongol regime, and he was the one that was leading that. But he was very strategic. He studied about the wall. He took about five years, actually, to really thoroughly think through all the areas where there might be some weaknesses. Now, he, he got all kinds of information. He was patient. You know, he would talk to the envoys that would come in and out doing business with China, and he would get information from them on what they saw and what they encountered when they were inside or different areas where they would come through gates. You know, he would, he would take advantage of the vulnerabilities of maybe people, people that were trying to either guard gates or guard certain areas of the wall, and he would, you know, he would bribe them or, you know, somehow take advantage of them. He's really kind of, he was a patient guy, and then he did come in, and then when he, at one particular point where he breached a particular area of the wall, there was a, a place that came from the palace, an underground tunnel that the soldiers and guys had actually created so they could get to the outer part of the wall very quickly. Well, that was great for them to get there quickly, but the problem was when he breached the wall, he just went through that tunnel and went right into the palace and just decimated that and took advantage and I think one of the things that was super interesting, the Jin dynasty, Jin, the emperor Jin, did not take him seriously. He kind of just, you know, minimized that he was really a threat. And, you know, this is what happens in our lives so many times. We, we think we've got it covered. We do certain things, and we kind of get comfortable with who we are. And the enemy is just waiting, waiting to take advantage of who we are and any vulnerabilities we might have. You see, China created a stronghold to protect that which was valuable. <clears throat> that which was valuable and essential to their future, to their legacy, to their destiny. As a nation, as a people. And in scripture... We hear often and we look at and we talk about strongholds. Typically, we talk about strongholds of the mind, right? We talk about how strongholds of the mind are built and established. And, and we, we understand that we need to work really hard to pull down strongholds, pull down those lies, those things that we have erected to guard and protect us in a negative sense. But we want to propose to you a whole new perspective. Mm -hmm. We want to propose to you that God's empowered you, graced you, desires for you to work individually and collectively to build a stronghold of connection mm -hmm. in your relationships. This is a great definition for the word stronghold, the Greek in the Bible, a translated 
or a fort is translated as a fortified military stronghold, a strong walled fortress. So when we hear teachings on strongholds, this is often a definition that we hear, a satanic lie, a generational mindset or a human wounding that you have listened to long enough, believed strongly enough, owned deeply enough that it becomes a part of your identity. I love that song that we sang this morning, by the way, worship team on identity. And you were declaring who you are in Christ, your That's true right. identity. See, the enemy wants you to build a stronghold of false identity. That way he, ha he can captivate you. He can totally infiltrate you. Um, so a stronghold, it has fortified itself in you and dictates your thoughts, beliefs, actions, and reactions. It's an unholy filter through which all thoughts pass. What if you began to work on building a stronghold of connection with the Lord, in your marriage, with your children, with your friends, in this community, community, which is a powerful truth, a generational, reproducible mindset and experience that you have listened to long enough, believed strongly enough, owned deeply enough that it becomes part of your identity, connection. It has fortified itself in you and dictates your thoughts, beliefs, actions, and reactions. It's a life-changing filter through which all thoughts pass. And that stronghold would sound something like, I am righteous. I am beautiful. I am loved. I am faithful. Mm -hmm. I am courageous. I am victorious. I am a winner. I am the head, not the, not the tail. I am significant to the world around me. I give and receive love and relationships. My strength comes from the Father and is demonstrated in the relationships that I nurture and protect. What if this was your stronghold? So today, that's what we want to talk about. We want to give you... Three B's. Everybody say B. Three things we want you to be in order to build a stronghold of connection. In the Bible, the word do or doing is only mentioned 1,200 times, but the word be and being 5,200 times. Mm -hmm. Do you think God wanted to say something to us about who we are, about our presence, about our purpose here on the earth, about being? You see, in the word we can see clearly there's two kinds of relationships we see in Genesis. Relationships of purpose, which is doing, and relationships of presence, which is being. I want to propose to you that our relationship with the Lord is first and foremost a relationship of presence. And out of that relationship of presence with the Lord comes all of the doing. You see, when you have the being going on here, you have a power source that fuels everything you do. So your doing in life comes from rest. Your doing comes from victory. Your doing comes from, um, yeah, from having accomplished that place of, of being with him. It flows out of being. And in our marriage relationship, our marriage and our family relationships, our friendships are primarily a relationship of being, a relationship of presence. And the things that we accomplish together come out of cultivating that place of connection or connectedness. So we want to give you three B's, okay, for creating a stronghold of connection. The first B is just simply be present. Just be present. You know, we have kind of, we've, we've, we've all understood this and heard it. I mean, it's like, obviously, we have so many distractions going on in the world today. I mean, these kind of things right here bring a pretty good distraction. So we have an illusion of connection through this, but we really don't. And many times when we talk about being present, it's like, look, just put your phone down 
you know, close your iPad, stop looking at your computer, turn the TV off. Let's actually just have a conversation. Let's be present with one another. And that's one form of being present. But we want you to use the verb tense yeah. of the word present, which is to present yourself. Very different than just putting your phone down. To be present, so much of our ability to be present comes from a realization of the gift we give to someone when we are present. The scripture says in Psalm 1611 from the New King James Version, in your presence is fullness of joy. You see, there is a level of joy, of pleasure with one another that only happens in the context of of my presence, when I show up and I'm fully with Liz and Francis, something happens here, isn't it? <laughs> I'm bringing the gift of who I am, and that means together with you, there's nothing hidden. Everybody say, nothing hidden, nothing withheld, and nothing protected. You can't be present if you're hiding. I think that's one of the greatest challenges that we are facing in this time where we are being required or requested or feel the necessity of wearing a mask because at some level, there's so much a part of who we are that is not seen, that we are not able to present. You know, it's interesting. We have so many different kind of examples how many of you have ever heard the phrase, dance like nobody's watching? Have you ever heard that? Okay. So, you know, we hear about it, we talk about it, kind of laugh about it. At one point, I, I saw a YouTube video. It was pretty funny. There was a lady that was cleaning her kitchen, I think. She had a mop, either mop or broom, and she was in there. Be, Man, careful, she had, now. be careful now. She might be in this room. She might be, actually. Because it was in a Latin American country. Totally, totally. So she had music loud and she was obviously cleaning and she was into the music and man i mean she was swinging swaying and she's doing things Come with on, the broom and the pretty moves. soon she's got her hair flipping around she pulls her thing out and let her hair really flop and she's going to town now obviously her husband was filming and she didn't know so obviously she was dancing like nobody was watching and she was getting down. I mean, she was going for it. And it was so good. You, the, Man, look at her. She had some moves going on, I'm telling you. And all of a sudden, you see her turn around, and she sees her husband. The last thing you see on the video is her coming at him with the broom. And then the thing goes dead. Okay, she obviously was dancing like nobody was watching. But I love actually even thinking about this in, in a spiritual sense. One of my heroes of the faith is David. And if you look in 2 Samuel... 614, this is where David now had actually come into the place that he was really designed for. He now has become king, and so his whole desire is to get the Ark of the Covenant up in Jerusalem where he was going to be. He did not want to be separated from the presence of God. So we read the story about how he tried to do that. He had a, you know, a cart put together. He had all of this stuff, and as they were going to Jerusalem, it you know, they went over some unstable place in the road and it started to shift. And one of the guys reached out to steady it. Well, as soon as he touched it, he died. Okay, well, that put the fear into everybody. And they thought, whoa. So he took it. They parked it over at Obed Edom's house. And then he went back and began to study. What's going on? What have I done wrong? What do I need to know about how we transport the Ark of the Covenant? So he got it worked out, got the right information. And now here in this particular chapter... He is now getting ready to present himself and now transport the Ark of the Covenant up. It says that he stepped in front of the Ark. He took off his kingly robes. He stripped down to a linen ephod. The music started, and he started dancing like nobody was watching. Now, you know, y'all, when the so, music... So, so can you model no, that for I'm not going to do that. I'm Please not going to do it. model that I'm not going to embarrass me or you in the way I do this. But at home, you can do that, right? Nobody's watching. Well, me. Well, that's different. The point is, even during worship, obviously, when the music is going, sometimes we, and now obviously we had a, a person up here doing flags and was worshiping. Amazing. And it was amazing. But, you know, sometimes we get a little Holy Ghost hop going on. Sometimes we get a little bit more smooth, smooth thing happening. But it's pretty low-key, right? 
The way it described the way David was dancing before the ark, it was like he was a crazy man. I mean, the picture is like he's flailing and just all over the place, and it was crazy because a whole nation was watching. But he didn't care. It was like he didn't even, he was not even aware of anyone else around. His entire being was just worshiping his father, God. And it says when he got all the way up to Jerusalem, I mean, probably exhausted, but incredibly, you know, just invigorated with the whole experience. And he walks up into the palace, he sees his wife, and he's probably ready to really tell her, man, you wouldn't believe. Now, I don't know why she wasn't out there, but okay, that's, that's one story. But he was about to tell her all this, and her first words out of her mouth were, wow, is that any way for a king to act like that, dancing like that before the maidens? And David's response was what? I will be even more undignified than this. And basically what he was saying is, I wasn't dancing for you. I wasn't dancing for them. I was dancing for him and him alone. So he was dancing like nobody was watching but him. And then we find out later on that they, you know, that uh, Michael didn't have any children. Now, what we don't know, because the scripture doesn't go into detail, we don't know if actually the Lord closed her womb or if David just sent her to the backside of the palace and never had any intimate relations with her again. We don't know what happened. We just know that because of her sustaining heart and attitude towards her husband, that it broke any kind of intimate fellowship they would have had, and it stopped the seed line that would have come through her. There's something of you that is desired and needed in the connections around you, your family, with your friends, I want you to just take a moment and think about what part of you are you hiding? What part of you are you not bringing to the table? What part of you is, is not present? So the first aspect of building a wall of connection is be present. Bring the gift of who you are. All right? The second B be face to face. Everybody say face to face. There is no replacement for what we receive from each other when we are face to face. When we are face to face, there is an intimacy that gets nurtured, that gets developed. There is a vulnerability that is present when we are face to face. Did you know that if two people stood face to face, eye to eye, and didn't break gaze, for three minutes, your hearts would synchronize. Your heart rate. Your heart rates would completely synchronize. In Scripture, the same Hebrew word is used for face, countenance, sight, or presence. So you can see in Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence or the face of Jehovah God... In Exodus 33, 14 through 15, God's speaking to Moses, and he said, my presence or my face shall go with you. Have you ever had the experience where you've sat across the table from somebody and had a deep, meaningful conversation, shared a coffee together? You shared intimate aspects of your heart, your journey, what was going on for you. And when you leave that moment and you get uh, on the footpath on the way home or get in your car and you're, you're driving home, you have flashes of that person's face before you and statements that they made, things that they said. That is their presence that is still with you. Mm -hmm. There is no way that you will not carry each other's presence from this moment. Today when you leave here, you're going to carry with you aspect of the people's presence that are all around you. And their presence is actually shaping you. It's actually fortifying you. It's actually being added to you. We are stronger together. We are better together. There's parts of who you are that I need that can only happen in face-to-face -face encounters. I've been reading this book. 
you're not listening. Absolutely the most profound book. And I want to just read a bit to you in a minute here, but I want to give you some thoughts. Science is now able to prove the emotional and physical benefits of face-to-face -face encounters. Parts of our emotional health are completely dependent on what we receive eye and eye-to-eye -eye contact. Through our eye gates, we actually send and receive data. So in the morning when I get up, Steve's already been up for an hour, hour and a half. He's had a coffee or two. He's had his quiet time, his introvert time. And I walk into the room and I see him and he looks at me and he does what? <laughs> in that moment, he just sent me a joy bomb. And that joy bomb comes from his prefrontal cortex to my prefrontal cortex and it ignites joy in me. It gets sent back to him, it increases his joy back to me, increases my joy back to him, increases his joy. Six cycles in one second. Everybody say one second. One second. We're sending and receiving joy through our eye gate. Um, let me just give you a couple of thoughts. This was something that the Lord spoke to me as I was reading this book. So I, I thought, let me write it down and share it. We've traded face-to-face -face encounters for words on a device. And those words on a device offer no emotional interaction, no engagement, or commitment. Those words on a device that we're exchanging offer nothing of myself yeah. and nothing of the other. Right. In here, the country of Japan, and I won't bore you with a lot of this, but it's just so amazing. In the nation, in the country of Japan, no, okay, let me just, the UK was moved in 2018 to appoint a minister for loneliness, to help its nine million citizens who often are always feel lonely, according to a 2017 government commissioned report. And in Japan, there's been a proliferation of companies such as Family Romance that hire out actors to pretend to be lonely people's friends, family members, or romantic partners. We're not talking about sex partners. We're talking about uh, there's no sexual arrangements. Customers are simply paying only for attention. Mm -hmm. For example, a mother might rent a son to visit her when she's estranged from her real son. A bachelor might rent a wife who will ask how his day went when he arrives home from work. Mm. People, it starts when we disengage from one another mm -hmm. and we substitute face-in-face -face encounters with this thing right here. A part of what's happening in our, in our global world, in the world today, is an attempt to create disconnection simply by disallowing face-to-face -face encounters. Wake up. Mm -hmm. Wake up. Damn. Your emotional health is completely dependent on seeing the face of another human being who desires to be with you. We need each other. I need your strength. I need your courage. I need your peace. I need your joy. And I'm not going to get that through words in a text. I'm going to get that from being face to face with you. Yeah. In fact, God was the one who created this from the very beginning. I mean, we get a picture of it in the garden when, when Adam was created. It said after he created Adam from the dust of the earth, it says what? It says he breathed the life, he breathed his breath of life into Adam. Now, obviously, if we think about that for a minute, we know when someone is either struggling or maybe they've, you know, can't, they're not breathing anymore, we, we can do that. We can do what we call mouth to mouth, right? Where we actually breathe the breath of life in, we're breathing for them. So we get that picture of God 
bending down, mouth to mouth, breathing the breath of life into Adam, which means all of a sudden when life sprang forth and his eyeballs slammed open, the first face he saw was his father God, the creator. And that face was not one of scorn or like, wow, what did I just do? I don't know if I'm going to like this or not. No, it was full of delight. He was elated. He was so glad and happy and so delighted that this creation now was alive, and he was also now going to exchange and be in a a fellowship, a relationship with this one that he's created. And that actually is what ignited from the very beginning the joy center in our brain. The same thing happened with Eve, and that same thing happens to this day, and that's what she described earlier between us. See, and the thing of it is is that we, we read scriptures in the Bible that talk about the fact that the Lord will direct us with his eye, which means he's watching, he's looking, and all we have to do is get eye contact, get some face-to-face time, and he will direct us in that. And you know, we all have different experiences. I mean, I've been raised in the church. My father was a pastor, and even at a very young age, I would be kind of messing around in the back or on the back row when I shouldn't have been. And my mom was playing the piano or the organ. And I could almost feel her gaze when I was not doing what I should be doing. And I, I would almost, at, at a place, I would go, oh, and I could not keep myself from looking. <laughs> I had to look. I could feel it penetrating. And I would look up and I would see my mom. And she had this look, and she was directing me with her eyes. Now, God doesn't look at us that way. But the principle is when we engage, we get information. We're directed. And he's willing and wanting to direct us with his eye. You know, this is one of those things where, again, in Scripture, we see an example of that. Peter, in the Bible, we we see where Jesus was walking across the water. And the disciples were in the boat. And and they were afraid. They were so afraid. And, and it was like they thought he was a ghost. And when he started to get a little bit closer, Peter, you know, was the one that called out. He said, Jesus, if it's really you, call my name and I'm going to come to you. And so Jesus spoke. And we read, it says that Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water. Now, the scripture doesn't say this, but this is what we can kind of surmise from what it does say. When he said, Jesus, if it's you, speak my name, and Jesus says, Peter, you can get the idea that Peter was looking at Jesus. He caught the gaze, and there was eye-to-eye contact. And in that moment, the very thing that Jesus carried, the strength, the peace, the courage, all of the stuff that was within Jesus was now transmitted to Peter who then, as a result, stepped out of the boat into an absolutely impossible circumstance and began to walk in on the water. See, when we get face-to-face, eye-to-eye contact, everything that we're in need of is given. Now, the reason I can say that it was through this eye-gazing is because of what the Scripture does say later. Because it says, Then Peter saw the wind and the waves, which meant he wasn't looking at Jesus. He got his eyes off of Jesus. He started looking at his circumstances and his surroundings. And so what happened? He began to sink. And Jesus had to reach out and bring him back up. So when we have face-to-face or eye-to-eye contact with with Jesus, the one who is our Savior, everything we're in need of is provided. So building a stronghold of connection, be present. Bring the gift of who you are. Be face-to-face. Trade in those devices for moments of actual being with one another, being together. And then the third B for building a stronghold of connection is be still. Be still. Everybody just say that. Be still. Stillness is not the absence of activity or quietness of mind and heart, but it's the ability to tune out and tune in. It's the ability to focus. You know, I, I, when I'm at church, I, we like to sit right somewhere here, like right in the front. And you know why I need to sit in the front? Just take a guess why I need to sit in front. 
Less distraction. Absolutely. It helps me to stay focused. It helps me to be still in my mind. Psalms 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. And that word be still is Rapha, which actually means sink back. There is something about building a connection of stronghold that is directly connected to us just being still with one another, sinking back and having casual, informal time. I told Steve this morning, I said, we're getting ready to, to, to uh, purchase a piece of property to build a place for people to come and be healed. And I told Steve and I said, I can just see like a, a campfire and couples sitting around just sinking back in some Adirondack chairs around a gas fire sharing deep and meaningful conversation with one another, practicing that stillness of mind where we are focused on the gift of ourselves with one another, being still, not striving, but letting go of the things around us. That's what empowers us to see, to know, to discern, to understand. That is really the key of listening. There's so much that we've lost it used to be generationally, your parents, your grandparents probably, sitting on the front porch of their house. And what were they doing? Having conversations for three and four hours. They were being still. They weren't running around doing 55 million things. They had learned to direct their affection towards one another. I think that's why they had so many kids in those days. <laughs> exactly. They were exercising the discipline necessary to tune out mm. the rhetoric, the demand of other people. You guys need to learn to park this thing. Mm -hmm. We tell couples all the time, when you get home from work, have a basket. Everybody puts those devices in that basket, and those devices stay put away for the entirety of your evening. Why? Because you're building a stronghold of connection. You're building a stronghold of connection through being still. So we're growing in awareness of ourself, of one another. We're disciplining ourselves. We're staying focused. You know, and everything that we do when we're talking about these areas, it, everything is directly in correspondence with our relationship with the Lord, right. the way that we are connected and receive from the Lord. But because we're made in his image, everything that's coming from here is translated immediately into our person-to-person -person relationships. And so, obviously, part of, you know, us really having a, a solid connection with the Lord is learning to hear what the Father's saying, learning to have this engagement and this interaction back and forth with the Lord. I read a book years ago. It was written by a lady by the name of Teresa Septutis, who the title of the book is just simply Hearing God in a Noisy World. And her whole premise was to teach people actually how to hear God and, and the way to discern what God is saying. Which you was know? connected to tuning out and tuning in. And so the point there is that so many times we, we make a statement like, God, you know, God's trying to tell me something. Well, actually, no, he's not trying. He's saying it. We're actually trying to listen. We have to figure out how to tune in so that we can get on the same frequency and actually hear what he's saying. When we live our lives where we really are intentional about tuning in to the Lord, we can hear him speak in even just everyday things around us. We could be driving down the street and see a billboard or an advertisement that is just about some innocuous thing, but the words may all of a sudden come flashing out at us, and it's like a truth that God will breathe on and actually give us information and give us an understanding. We can see things or hear things on the radio that may not, you know, on, in the natural ear might not have to do with anything. But if we're tuned into God, it'll affect us in a different way and give us things that we need to know. And so this lady was telling one of the stories that she shared in there was how she actually heard God speak to her one night through her dogs. And I, when I first saw that, I thought, what? Well, Please, really? But then I read this story, and she was just sharing about the fact that she bought two German shepherds when they were about eight weeks old. So they were, you know, from the same litter. 
and they were obviously cute little pups, and she had raised them. And at this particular time, they were about two years old. So they were big now. They were large dogs. And they would sleep on their little beds up on the landing on a stairwell in her house. And she said one, one morning, about 3 o'clock in the morning, she woke up. She was quite thirsty, and she thought she'd go downstairs to the kitchen to get a glass of water. So she did that. When she was finished with the water, she turned around getting ready to come back up the stairs. And when she did, about halfway up the stairs was one of her dogs. Now, 3 o'clock in the morning, it's quiet. But, man, this dog now was excited to see her. So he's jumping around and kind of spinning in circles. His tail's beating against the side of the wall and the he's, banister. He's doing a David dance. He's doing a David dance. And it just tickled her. I mean, she thought, this it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and this dog is so excited right now. So she gets up to him. She's scratching his head and kind of playing with him just a little bit, you know. And she finally she says, okay, come on, come on, let's go upstairs. So he turns around and scampers up the stairs, and she got up to the top of the stairs at the landing, and when she gets up there, she hears... And she looks over to the beds where the dogs were laying, and the other dog that didn't get out of bed was still there, just kind of sitting there. He was just kind of looking at her, and he was just wagging his tail, and it was just hitting the wall, you know, just kind of at a slow pace. He was probably happy to see her, but really comfortable in bed and didn't feel it was necessary to get up. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she said, I heard God ask me a question. He said, do you love this dog more than you love that dog? And she thought, well, that's... That's crazy. Of course not. I mean, they're almost exactly the same. I got them at the same time. They, you can't hardly tell them apart. They look very similar. And No, I, of course not. I love them exactly the same. And then she heard God say, well, then why were you showing this one so much attention just a minute ago? And she kind of chuckled. She thought, well, <laughs> I mean, I couldn't even get by him. He was like right in my way. He was blocking my path. He was right there. He was so excited. He, that's the only reason why I was doing that. And then she heard God say, exactly. And it's the same way with my kids. I love every one of them exactly the same. There is no limit to my love. I love them all the exact same way. I love them in a similar way. But she said, the ones that get my attention are the ones that figure out where I'm going and get right in my way. So why would I tell you that story? What's the point? The point is understanding what we need in relationship, understanding even our relationship with the Lord and the fact that he has created us, hardwired us for connection and relationship and understanding that our relationship with him first will infuse everything that we need to actually do these relationships here on the earth in a right way that actually displays his glory, displays his goodness. And again, in Romans, it tells us it's the goodness of God that draws men to repentance. Yeah. And when we live in an authentic way, when we learn how to actually be in mm. relationship with Thank him you, and with others, we create almost a magnet that people cannot stay away from. It's like they see it, they observe it, and they're like, I need that, I want that, I desire that. We're creating a stronghold of connection. Can yeah. we get the worship team up here? I just feel like there's some things that God wants to shift for the house today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For some of you... Creating a stronghold of connection is going to require you to bring the gift of who you are. Yeah. To actually come into agreement with who God says you are. Your greatness. God doesn't make junk. When God made you, he didn't make a mistake. He wasn't guessing. He wasn't throwing a few random things together. In Psalms 139, it says that he thoroughly thought and designed and crafted you. You being present and learning to bring the gift of who you are to the Father empowers you to bring the gift of who you are to one another. Some of you are ready to make that exchange. The exchange of, 
hiding, not being known, being secretive, pretending. You're ready to exchange that for actually seeing yourself as he sees you and bringing that gift both to him but also to that relationship with one, of, one another. I want everybody to just stand to your feet. Just do that. Let's just um, step into this place. And if that's you, I want you to just raise your hands as, a, as, a, as an acknowledgement of surrendering to the Father. Father, I'm choosing today. I'm making a decision today to bring myself, to present myself to you, to present my heart before you, to acknowledge that you desire my presence. Yeah, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just loose off of everyone in this room ways of hiding, defenses, false beliefs, insecurities. Father, we just release over this house right now the gift of transparency and vulnerability right now. No more... Um, Things of the past that are defining who you are in relationships today. Father, we just release the ability to be real, to be honest, to be known. Thank you, Father. Thank you, yeah, Father. I just uh, immediately thought of the scripture that David spoke in Psalms 139. I believe it's around verse 23 where he is saying, search my heart. Oh, God. Just know me. Just know me. Look yeah. in to my heart. Thank Search you, everything Father. in there. If there's Thank any you, wayward Father. way in there, you know, let me know. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know me fully. I'm not yeah. hiding oh. anything from you. I want to be known by you because I can only be loved as much as I'm known. So I am choosing to be known by you. That's it. And That's as we it. do that, particularly with the Lord, there is an authentic infusion of who he is into us. Again, that translates into our way that we relate to each other. Nothing hidden, nothing Thank protected, and nothing I want withheld. you to just exchange self-protection right now. I want you to just close your eyes. Just be in this place with the Lord. You don't have to look at us. I want you to just surrender to the Lord. That feeling or the need to protect yourself, to defend yourself. Just maybe, let's just deal with some shame that would prevent you from bringing yourself wholly to him. Just, if this feels true for you, just pray this with me. In the name of Jesus, out loud, in the name of Jesus, I renounce all agreements I've made with shame. I break the power of shame. I cancel the assignment of shame. And Father, I come into agreement with the truth that you've made me holy. You've made me righteous. You call me lovely. There is nothing hidden within me. Father, today I choose transparency. I choose vulnerability. I choose to honestly bring myself into my relationships. I choose to bring myself honestly before you so I can be fully known and fully loved. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Some of you have been hiding behind busyness, preoccupation, a mask. And I don't mean that cruelly. I don't mean that derogatorily. But I will say, honestly for myself, sometimes it's been easy to wear a mask because I don't have to show the real me. I can be grumpy behind that mask and I'm giving nothing of myself. And so Father, right now, if that's you, if you realize you've not been willing to be face to face, but you desire 
to be face to face, first and foremost with the Lord. I just want you to nurture that in your heart. Father, I come to you with a desire to see you, to see your face, to behold your glory, to behold the presence of the Lord. Father, I speak a release right now of an increase of face time with you. Increase time before you. Increase time in the word. Increase time in your presence, Father. We speak an upgrade. Come on, an upgrade, an upgrade. Some of you are going to have to change your appointments because he's saying more. I want to be with you. I want to see your face. I want to behold your glory. Not only are you beholding his glory, he wants to behold your glory. Your glory. And then some of you, you just need to repent for being busy not being still, allowing the busyness of your mind to preoccupy your attention. The focus, the attention you've meant to give to your spouse, to a gathering, to your friends, your kids, your job. Some of you, I'm seeing at work, you are so distracted at work, you're not doing your job. You're not focused. You're not narrowing in. You're not giving your best self, even to your employer. So just ask the Lord to forgive you. Father, forgive me. Forgive me for not being still, not being focused, not narrowing my gaze, not seeing where you're moving and getting in your way. So, Father, we do just want to thank you so much for your heart towards us. And, God, again, the seeds of revelation that come, that are sown, Father, that they would be deposited on fertile soil here. And, Father, as each one that's now heard something today that you would highlight to them and that the water of your spirit would continue to water it, nourish it, <clears throat> so that that fruit, the good fruit, would grow and remain in their lives. And that, Father, right here would be, again, the beginning of seeing a nation changed for you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 My heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus the center is all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. And from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's from my heart, from my heart to the heavens. Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's from my heart and from my heart to the heavens. Jesus be the center. It's all from my heart, sing from, from my heart to the head. Lord, you be the center of it all. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart, from my heart to the head. Jesus sat, and Jesus sat the center of it all, and Jesus sat the center of it all, from beginning to the end, from beginning to the end, it will always be 
It's always been you, Jesus. It's all about that name. It's Jesus. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. It's all about your name. It's Jesus. What a powerful name it is. Jesus. Sing that name this morning. Jesus. And oh, oh, oh. There's healing in that name. And Jesus. Nothing else and nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Oh, Jesus. And Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves. And everything revolves around you. Jesus, you. Nothing else. Nothing else matters, and nothing in this world will do. And Jesus, you're the center, and everything revolves around you. Jesus, you sing from my heart. And from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. And from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. From my heart. From my heart, Lord, we want you to be the center of it all. It's all about Lord, you be our hub. This morning, before we close, if there's anybody here that would say, you know what, I don't know if I'm okay with God. I really don't have any connection with God. I don't really, you know, I don't know if I'm okay, if I would die, where I would spend eternity. And you're here this morning, and you say, you know what, I want to, I want to create that connection with God. I want to I want to have a connection with God or Father. I want to I want to receive what Jesus did on the cross. I want to have a relationship with Him. If you're here this morning and you have never done that before and you say, you know what? This morning I want a connection with God. I want to be able to live connected to Him. I want to ask to raise your hand if there's anybody here that has never made that decision before. Or anybody here that says, I want. Or, I want you to. Number two, if you're here this morning and you say, you know, I, I used to follow God. I used to be so in love with Jesus. But something happened. And you, I walked away. I, you say, you know what, I, I just... I, I lost my connection. You say, you know, I want my connection back. I want to be able to feel the presence of God in my life. And you say, you know what, I want that. I want the connection back. I want you to raise your hand. If you're here this morning and you say, you know what, I need to reconnect. I, I, need, to, I need to just plug in again. And I want to just serve God with all my heart. And I want to be connected to what He does. I just want you to repeat after me. But all together, because there's a couple of hands raised. I want everybody to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. I believe that you died so I can be free. I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. And I thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do in my life. Lead me, guide me, Holy Spirit, and to all that you've created me to do. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you that connecting is the beginning and then grow in your connection. So Lord, I pray this now. But I pray that we would just, everybody here would grow in our connection with you, Lord Jesus. That we would just foster it. We would just fertilize it to become stronger and stronger. I pray that we would create this momentum that's going to change this city. That's going to transform the lives of this city and advance the kingdom of God. I pray, Father God, that we, as a body of Christ, as this family, that we would just recognize and utilize and release the power that you've given us, Lord Jesus. The authority you've given us. And that we would go out there and change the atmosphere and create an environment where the kingdom of God can come. Where whatever happens in heaven can happen here. Because we release the heaven and earth here. We thank you, Jesus. And Father, I pray that this week that we'll be ambassadors for the kingdom that are going to make you proud. Yes, Lord Jesus. Bless each and every one. Give them a great week. Protect them as they go home, Lord Jesus. Let them experience you again this week, Father God. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. God bless you guys. All you that are visiting and you don't have a home church, we are here for you, man. We, we have a heart and a vision to transform the city and I know you have the same heart and you, we can work this out together God bless you guys have a wonderful week and you are dismissed love each other hug each other if you want and you are dismissed